todo. Hi everyone, I'm Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America here with Takahisa Tanaguchi from Japan. We're so honored that he flew to Asheville, North Carolina to meet with me and to, to share about what's happening in Japan and the US and the food supply. Um, Hisa is a climate change speaker, public speaker. He's spoken over 1,800 times around the world in the past four, year, four years. Four years. And he's been to 90 different 90 cities. countries, no countries. Countries? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So he's been around the world speaking about the changes that are happening in the climate and the agriculture system and the food supply. Exactly. And can you, can you tell us the reception that you're getting around the world? Are people actually starting to make changes with how they eat or with uh, farming systems that could make a difference for um, the, the, agri you know, the food supply and the climate? Are people, yeah. are you seeing a reception of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like becoming more and more like, you know, very um, eager to eat, like choose like their like food and uh, like, especially in you, you, like Europe, the farmland, like percentage, like, for example, I was living in Germany, but next country is Austria. Like in Austria, like 26% of the farmland is like not organic. It's not organic. No, it's organic. Oh, it is organic. 26%. Yeah. 26%. So more wow. like one fourth. In the United States, it's about two to maybe five percent, I believe. So it's we have a long ways to go here. Well, in Japan, it's like zero point two. Oh, really? I mean, Very small percentage. Yeah, but there's a lot of um, power struggle that's going on. With the United States is really bullying, bullied the uh, Japanese government to accept GMOs in mm -hmm. 2018, the GMO seeds, and the they increased, they forced the increase of glyphosate residues by 600 percent on the food supply. And you said that there's a there was a mandate done on a certain food product, the only food product in Japan that's mandated in schools. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, like we are doing the lawsuit to, to Japanese government. It, like we found out that like well, like one of my friends who is Koshi, who is like filming this like footage, like she's his like children have like problem with milk mm -hmm. in like school lunch because like he like they couldn't like digest the milk, so like they had problem. So like they wanted to stop, but like actually like they couldn't stop. And like we found out in Japanese law, in like school lunch law, like milk is like pretty much mandate. Wow. As long as you have like the allergy and if you can like prove it with like a you know doctor's diagnosis, like you can of course stop it, but otherwise like you know pretty much you can stop it. And they only like only ingredients of food which is mandatory or which is even in the like law is like milk. That's the only thing. So like so we are trying to change the law by I'm. Lost, yeah. yeah, so milk is mandated in Japanese schools, and unless you have an allergy, you're not allowed to say no to milk. Yes. That is ridiculous. And it is known like uh, many you know, Asian people have allergies. But many do, yes. Yeah, yes. Most, I would say most Asian people don't digest lactose exactly. very, very well. Like but so, the problem is like to prove it, like you have to get diagnosed, and that diagnosis is like, very expensive, so it's like not really fair. Yes, it's not. Yeah, a lot of people can't afford to go to doctors yeah. and to be, yeah, to get that. So there's a lot of um, policies that are, you know, that are coming down from the governments to the people and people are speaking up. The, the activism in Japan is fantastic. I know that there are 47 prefectures and there are 47 leaders, leaders in every prefecture trying to get organic food into schools. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, well, like, I mean, the, like school lunch. Yes. Oh, we're doing like the, well, mostly like petitions, or mostly like the, like mostly moms go to like school directly to like, to you know, ask for like changing the school lunch um, organic, and now like as far as I remember, like more than one hundred schools are you know doing some part, well sometimes partially, but organic school lunch. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I know South Korea has a lot of organic food in their school lunches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and countries like Italy, they all their food has to come from local sources. Mm -hmm. So it may not be 100% organic, but it's much more healthier than what's yeah. happening in America. We've done testing on school lunches and the food is very toxic. There's actually more toxins in the food than nutrients. And so we also tested fast foods and found uh, that to be very toxic as well. So we strongly encourage other countries not to import our fast food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. is there any, anything else that you want to tell us about your, your uh, travels and your speaking and some of the things that you're promoting and supporting right now? Well, mostly like I'm focusing on the climate change, but also like uh, of course the food supply chain, the uh, food supply system is like not like very like deeply connected to with climate change. So of course we cannot you know ignore the like food supply chain as well. You know when we talk about climate change, so like of course we have to you know uh, focus on changing that like well 
not exactly change it, but getting back to put the supply to like once a before, once a month before, so that like we can combat climate change as well. Yeah, local, locally um, accessed yeah, locally, food, yeah, whole foods, and not organic. yeah organic, not non processed, yeah, no. not processed, non GMO. Um, yeah, we really have to to stop trying to get the easy, fast, cheap food, exactly, right? That's exactly. the problem. We That's need the, problem. the real food. But what I love about the Japanese culture is that people are very connected to nature. Mm -hmm. They're very connected to their ancestors and to tradition and um, like what we call heirloom food here. That type of farming and seeds are very important in Japan. So I have a lot of hope. Uh, I mean, the, the, the uh, 47 prefectures and the leaders in those areas that are getting organic food into school have done it much faster than people here in the United States. So people are working together in Japan, they're supporting each other, they're thinking about the entire country and the entire group as, you know, people as a group, rather than just individuals, which yeah, is yeah. what we have that <clears throat> struggle in, in the United States. People mostly think about themselves or their own family and not the whole group. So. Um, you have that going for you. Anything else that you want to share about your? I've got the big hope countries? as well. Like, and uh, I think the biggest hope lies in the fact that you know people like actually do not know about like GMOs or food supply chain well enough. Some yeah. people say say like it's uh, you know like disappointing that you know well only a few people know. But I think it's actually hope because once they know it, they can actually make a change. Yes. So like the hope lies in the fact that. Like it, no, not everybody knows about the food supply chain like well enough. So once we can, you know, let them know, then of course like there would be change. So that's a hope. Yeah, the there's, a lot, there's a lot of hope, and so I would highly encourage, um, especially the Japanese um, American associations, to invite you to be a speaker. That would be really great. The connection between the Japanese government yeah, and both. the U.S. government would really be really fantastic for people to be aware in schools, uh, universities, or across the country. That would be fantastic if you could speak there. Most people don't know this, but the Japanese government is the largest purchaser of grains in the United States. And so basically the Japanese government is the kind of the boss or the main customer of the um, Midwest farmers of GMO, soy, corn, canola, things like that. So we have, we have a, a very strong relationship with uh, Japanese activists and we're really appreciate, we're so honored that you're here and we really appreciate hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you.